Based on those information, this 3D top view is generated um, and this is just one view and to convince you that it's real uh, 3D top view we have to go first on the test track, so just... There are some cones and stay to the go to the right. So now just stop here because this part of the test track we have for for us alone. Just stop and you can have a look uh, that this is a real 3D top view. You can play around by yourself. So we have some predefined views. Um, on, on these four uh, buttons. So they appear on the screen. Yeah. No, no. It's a 3D top view and you only change the uh -huh. way of looking to the scenery. So these are predefined ones where you think they, are, they might be useful. Uh, but it's a real 3D top view so you can change the orientation based on this little joystick. Um, in, in any direction. So, and this is a new part that we present here. So just the, the view from, from above, you can already buy uh, on the market, but to have a, a 3D top view where you can have an arbitrary look on the scene, this is a new thing we can uh, present here. Okay, this is just the first part of, the, of my presentation. So it's just visualization, but we already think that it's very helpful for assisting um, in parking maneuvers because it's quite simple based on this representation to have an estimate how many space is two obstacles near to the car. Uh, but you can also show the first function we have developed based on these um, fisheye camera lenses. So they have a very big opening angle and fisheye lenses. Um, we call this function backup assist and for this we have to go a few hundred meters. Just follow the track. And yeah, it's an emergency braking assist, uh, assistance function. So we try to estimate obstacles uh, generic objects above the ground and if these obstacles enter a security region that is defined by us then an emergency braking is initialized. So just pass the cones on the right and then 
uh, stop in front of the bobby car so that the rear camera is looking in direction of these sign there the sign is just for orientation so go a little bit to the to the left so that it's easier for you because it's a backup assist you have to drive backwards now mm -hmm. so the sign is just for for your orientation please wait um, the sign is just for your orientation because you you will immediately uh, recognize if you come closer to this little toy car that it's impossible to see it in in your mirrors you have in the car so please try to uh, keep the sign somewhere in the middle of the car and slowly uh, go backwards and be aware that uh, yeah there if you come closer that an emergency braking um, is done Yeah, if you want to hit something, it's <laughs> not so easy. So I have the little car in on the left. So here is a, the bobby car. So now it's coming closer. Now it's recognized, and if you now just go backwards, it's an emergency braking system, so you are you get the warning and uh -huh. also the braking. So here we combine it all together to one compact module. We have less weight with it with this, we have less volume with this in comparison to a, a standard one. And the big advantage of this system is that, that we have a very um, high dynamics, very fast uh, brake pressure buildup. Mm -hmm brake by wire system means that we have no direct connection from the brake pedal to the brakes. Um, where we can stay ahead you know, and ignore the traffic signs. I can't do also that. Allowed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not only allowed here <laughs> because this is only for the cars for the automatic driving. Um, brake by wire system. Because we have a brake by wire system we can equip this module to each kind of car. We can equipped a vehicle with only combustion engine, also a hybrid electric vehicle like this is one, mm -hmm. also a fully electric vehicles. Um, brake by wire system, as I mentioned before, no, no direct connection, here please left, no direct connection between brake pedal and the brakes. So we have a sensor inside the module which detects here straight on which detects what the driver, driver is doing with the brake pedal. Um, and then we, we send it to the brakes from, from our module. In the cars with the automatic driving, you will see later on that they are equipped with a radar sensor and a camera, which detects um, what's going on in front of the car. If there is an event, to have an emergency brake, for example, if a, if a kid is running on the street, or, um, yeah, here, so left and then directly to the right side. Yeah. Yeah. When we have an, an event of an emergency brake, the sensor sends a signal to our module which says, Boop, I need full brake performance, I need full brake pressure. And because I have no sensor here inside in this vehicle, I can simulate it via a switch a button here. Okay. Yeah. So we will go with 70 kph and later on, yeah, show you later on, uh, we, we pass the, the bridge and after that please turn left and then there is a dark grey surface um, with traffic signs and a pylon. And when we pass the pylon, I will press this button. And please pay attention, it will be where we have a leak, for ex especially for the camera. Like here? Here, yeah. There, you will see the, the, the traffic signs and the pylon with 70. Wow. And 
then I press the button when we pass the pile up. So please pay attention. Now, we will do it again with 30. 30 is a typical velocity for a city. Okay. So it's a typical situation, yeah, Maybe driving through the city. See in the city. Yeah. And then, if then, for example, a kid, a mm. kid is jumping in the uh, behind a row of cars. So, attention. Like five meters or how long? Yeah, I think a little bit shorter. <laughs> Not so much, yeah. Wow. Yeah, as fast as we can build up the brake pressure, um, as shorter as the, as the brake distance. So we can reduce it with this module extremely. So with the today's standard systems, we have a volume weight of 10 to 15 cubic centimeters per second. With this system, with the Maxi One, we have 30 cubic centimeters per second, double as oh, much double. As, yeah. as now. Um, we can go go straight on, back on the on the track. Um, yeah, we, we we have done a, a simulation for that with a in comparison with a with a standard car, um, and then we started with 66 kph and um, we can reduce the brake distance by 5 meters. Another advantage of the system is that we, um, as I mentioned before, brake by wire system, no direct connection between brake pedal and um, brakes, but we have to give the, the driver a pedal feeling. So we have a pedal feel simulator for that, and we can adjust the pedal feel. Um, please do here when we go on the, on the straight, um, smooth brake pedal applies when you are yeah, going on the, yeah, in the traffic. Or, yeah. So now I will change it, please do again, the, the pedal feel changes a little bit. Nice. Softer, a little bit smoother, mm -hmm. a little bit more pedal travel. So we, still, we have uh, we have the opportunity to change the pedal feel. Um, if one driver wants a very sportive brake, then we can do it. If another driver wants a very comfortable and smooth pedal, we can we can also adjust it with this. If the manufacturer allows this later on. It depends on the, cost, uh, on, the, on the car manufacturer, but it's a, it's a possibility to do that. Yeah, we go back. I'm a developer engineer, group leader for advanced engineering uh, for Continental, and I have the nice task to show you the elements of automated driving in this car. So we start very slowly. Please fasten your seat belts. That's extreme important because we have emergency steering and braking on this show and it could be sometimes a little bit hard. So, at first okay. we have different sensors in this car. We have a steric camera in front of the car, a long range radar in front of the car and four radar sensors around the car. Um, this is a, a direct clone from the Nevada car, you heard it in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, and we drive with this car thousands of miles in the US to get the um, permission to drive the automated, highly automated in this case. So for automation, in partly automation, highly automation and fully automation, we need several informations. I, I start very slowly. We get the information from the sensor, the images, the stereo information from the stereo camera, from the radar, the information, and we put all together in an environment model. This environment model um, analyzes the data and gives you, a, for you, its display is a two dim dimensional image. Get the information green it's drivable area and blue it's undrivable area on this test track you see everything at first is flat and everything's green 
if there's a crash barrier. See here the blue area, it's an undrivable area and the car don't go over areas like that. So the next point is for uh, partly highly and fully automation. There are markers on the street normally, especially in highway and countryside areas. So we can use this to navigate. If I put the ACC on 70 kph in this case and activate the system, the car follow the lines and I don't have to do anything. I only have to monitor it in this car because it's a research car so I have to be careful with every function I try because I can do anything with this car. Mm -hmm. But the car follows the lines by themselves and I, I don't do anything for that. Only looking that there's no error. So um, the important point is that we don't want to automate everything. We want that you have the con fully control on the car. So. The easiest things give the control back to me if I use the blinker, for example. I push it and then the system switches off and I can use it like a normal car in this case. So uh, we can recognize more with the camera. We start with the camera and we really on the beginning of cam camera uh, work, we can recognize with the camera the same things uh, what you're doing with your eyes. So we can recognize lights in the night, we can recognize objects, we can uh, recognize the world in three dimensions with a stereo camera system. So we see ups and downs in the street and holes and everything while standing at, at, uh, at the side of the car. And we can recognize um, traffic signs for example. And that's one point more we need for uh, the uh, parts of uh, partly automation, highly and fully automation. We have to stay in the rules of the roads. Mm -hmm. So if there's a traffic sign and the traffic sign is at 30 for example, then we have to go down with the speed and have a go in the lights here and go up to 50 kph on this example. Um, activate the system, the car follows the lines and there's a 30 and if I don't do anything the car said okay there was a 30 and you you don't push the brake so I have to go down with the speed and do that by themselves if I don't do anything so the next point is we have very complex scenarios on the world there are no lines for example construction site areas so you see it here the the barks and I have to monitor it but the car can follow every object that have a high overground. So we can follow the barks oh. on this side or cones or con uh, the, the crash barriers. Oh. And so we then need only the lines. We can also work with other, other markers in this side. So we can go through it and the car follows. And the last point we need for, especially for the um, countryside and for, for highway situations is if there's a car driving in front of us, we can follow this car in the lines and in the rules. So if you're driving at the car um, and the car is stopping in front of us, we have to brake also and the car do, do that by themselves. I do nothing with my feet in this case and we stop, go, go on to the stop in this point. And we monitor the, in front of the car if there are someone is running in this area and if there's nothing happened, then the car starts automatically and can follow the car and driving in front of us and follow in the lines. So that's the points for for the partly highly and fully automation in highway and countryside areas. And at this point, we are very near that we can bring the first partly and in the nearly future, I think. 2020 highly automated systems into the market. There's one regulation, um, the regulation by law. Normally it is forbidden to drive a car by themselves. So the driver has, has to be every time the control over the car and actually the OEMs and uh, Continental and other um, uh, Bosch for example are working on that, that we can do more with the cars mm -hmm. to get the um, uh, traffic safer. For example, you are in a traffic uh, jam and you are, the driving is very boring and the systems can help you to stay happy in your car. Mm. 
So the next point is if we do that for highway and countryside areas, we can also uh, try to, to do something in, um, in the area of, uh, uh, in urban areas. So, be careful. Uh, so, um, we start to, to generate the first assistance systems to, to, to help a driver in, in the um, areas of, of, of uh, towns. And you see here a curbstone that we uh, invent a curbstone recognition if, if I try to drive over the car pushes me back, for example. So I can get help to find the way and the car can also navigate on these points. It's not necessary to have lines in, in a town, you can also use the uh, pedestrian walk for orientation, like we do it in a normal town. The next point is at crossing scenarios. There are traffic lights, we have to recognize them, to analyze what they are said to us, in this case red, and then we can say, okay, you have to brake or to do something, and for, for example, in the far future, really far future, mm -hmm. we can say, okay, let's break on this if the driver don't recognize the red light. Okay, first the, the braking on the dummy. Um, I will engage the ACC to 40. Now, ready, I will not use my feet. Um, you know this, I think, um, from my colleague. And we will get the warning. I have enabled the system. Uh, it's running, so we get a warning and then the braking will be by the car. If I ignore the warning and I will do it. Okay, so as you could see, didn't move my feet here, so yes. the system was warning us and okay, a normal driver would act then if he uh, is not, uh, con uh, what's the right word, I don't know it, um, if he can act he would. <laughs> but yes, yes. I ignored it to show you that the braking will be from the car automated to rescue perhaps our lives or the lives or of the preceding vehicle or even help to reduce injuries. You know the, the situation, I think. Um, I will talk only very shortly. Um, I will engage the ACC system again. Um, so I don't have to use my feet that you can control, I'm doing nothing. Um, that's important that you can see after the warning, normally I should react but I will not do it, that you can see that the system is trying to avoid or mitigate the collision with the pedestrian. Okay. Okay, so please be aware of the hard braking. Um, ACC is engaged, my feet are off. Um, as we are crossing through the light barrier, the pedestrian will start to cross the road and if the system or I will not do anything, we will hit it right in the middle. But I hope that the camera is able to detect the pedestrian and that we will break. Okay, really okay. hard Perfect. braking and the poor dummy is saved and his life is rescued again. <laughs>